Um, hi, my name is Nikita and I will be reading the story Millennial Romance. Um, the abstract of the story goes like this. There was a him, there was a her, and this is a story of how they tried to become us. Or is it a story of how becoming us is not the same as just being him and her? You decide. And the story goes like this. Because that is what millennials do. They acknowledge the truth and walk away from it as soon as their feet recuperate from the trauma and are capable enough to carry the weight that now rests comfortably on their shoulders. Because there is a curse that comes with knowing and this curse will always undo anything that is built with knowledge. This curse doesn't have a name. It merely haunts the millennial with forethought and then leaves her stranded on a road that she had once shared with him. Because even when his fingers gently brushed at her nether lip and his eyes danced with a want that strangely mirrored hers, they both knew not to act on the rush. From dilated pupils and racing heartbeats, they went back to their former positions in his new kitchen. He fixed her a fenny drink as she complained about her Goan girlfriend with the curly hair and exotic skin. Because this is what she did. The girl with three strands of silver hair and a pierced nose. The girl with the tattoo that forced her to seize every day and then stand under the shower in tears, regretting the ink on her skin. The girl with the tree of life between her shoulder blades who lied about her roots. The girl gifted with all the paradoxes. That year, she had decided to travel 360 miles to meet him on the day she saw a new silver hair smiling at her in the mirror. It reminded her of his hair and the first words she had written on the air above his skin, Kafoon. She carried with her the ache of a love that she had ruined, a few bottles of fermented cashew, a rucksack with clothes for half a week and a heart beating with anticipation of how promising tomorrow seemed. She spent the eve of her 24th in a bus under blue neon lights, behind drawn curtains, talking to a man who was a decade older than her and who inspired her to cover her ears with the mirthless voice of cake. He had laughed that deep throat, manly laugh, when she retold the story of her ruthless lover and the escapades under the summer skies. She entertained him with her sorrow as he proclaimed that he would never do anything to hurt her, his best friend. She entertained him with the story of her student life as he congratulated her on undoing the strings of a three-month-old cohabitation. I realized yesterday that our lives, yours and mine, are snaking around a grand design painted with the strokes of our very own actions. And sometimes I wonder how we have managed to keep this beautiful and twisted design, unblemished despite. His voice trails off as he realizes that he is venturing into waters that they had silently agreed to never try and test. I will see you tomorrow, she sighs. You know you will, he sighs right back at her. When she does see him the next day, he's standing under the only tree that leaned into the narrow corridor that once used to be her old office's smoking zone. He wasn't expecting her yet. She was early. His gaze was fixed on the leaves above him, a smoking stick snuggled comfortably between the drummer's fingers on his right hand and a cup of chai gripped oh so gently by the fingers of his left hand. She gulped, glad that she was wearing shades that hid her obvious elation. His eyes moved from the leaves and landed square on her face, and then he grinned. A basorexic urge overwhelmed her as she walked into his outstretched arms and he sighed, content, almost as if he was saying to her, No one knows, and no one will ever know, but I'm glad you're here. Because this is what millennials do. They shove all feelings under a rug because they know that it would ruin the pre-existing design that they had created with the strokes of their inaction. Reality is not a five years later plan. Re reality is a now that one has to live in. And when you have to pay bills and satisfy the responsibilities that come with age, you cannot afford to fall in and out of anything. They knew, and so they were happy with that momentary bodily contact that occurred twice every six months. One content hug for when they met, and one desperate hug for when he bid her adieu. She breathed in his soapy scent and murmured ever so lightly, I'm glad I'm here too. He smiled and held her against him for a few more seconds before releasing her. 
My, you have grown. He sounds proud. And you haven't aged a single day. As he talks to her about work and how it is the same hell as it was before she left, she can't help but wonder about the other women in his life. Do they do the things we did? Would you let them? And then with severe surety she tells herself that they would never know him like she did, never be invited to sleep in his bed and wear his clothes, never play with the curls of his hair, never answer his call at two in the night and talk about Maisie or Divine or how this world is ours but we just don't carpe diem the hell out of it. They would never be part of their design. They could always attempt to build another design with him but they would have to try real hard. She pities them because she was there where they stand today on the outside looking in and she has tried really hard to get here so close to him that she could smell the serum he used on his hair. It was hers. That evening she is already wasted when she reaches his home and he is floating in a cloud of grass. He runs towards her and picks her up in a bear hug, startling her, changing the design. There are no shades to hide the dilation of her pupils now and he notices, much to her chagrin. There are others in the house and soon she is passed around in a circle of hugs as they all congratulate her on stepping closer to death. One of them had bought his cat along with him and the feline walks stealthily around the house, eyeing her with suspicion. She begins to entertain them all with tales of her exotic go and girlfriend and they listen, enraptured by how same-sex relationships are no different from heterosexual ones. As the spirits begin to flow through their veins and the grass gets greener on their side of paradise and the music kills all the melodrama as snow is used to seal the deal, she keeps thinking if he really intended for the design to be interrupted. She keeps thinking and looking at him. He keeps thinking if this is the right time to change things. He keeps thinking and looking at her. Is this what you want? She asks. Isn't this what you have always needed? He asks. They hide it, their strife. But they both know now that something inside them has snapped. They know at the moment they are alone in his kitchen. She sits on the platform of his new kitchen complaining about her ruthless lover wiping the cake that everyone has so generously smeared on her face as he fixes drinks beside her. She's swooning with inebriation as his eyes are bloodshot with tranquility. When things fall, there is a premonition. And when people fall, not even the loudest bugles deter calamitous footsteps. And this is how change did and undid itself in a matter of seconds. As she keeps talking to him, she notices that he's smiling at the cup in his hand. What's so funny, old man? With that question, he's beckoned to stand between her legs and show her that a few rogue bits of cake in her hair had him all smiling. As she giggles and thanks him for making her look presentable again, his thumb strays from her hair, brushing the side of her face before gently resting on the tip of her nether lip. Dilation of pupils, sharp intake of breaths, bodies leaning in, noses almost touching. He's going to kiss me, she thinks. She's going to kiss me, he thinks. Finally, they smile. And then there is a crash in the hall. The cat has jumped over his symbols and has fallen into a tub of lights. The moment is gone. He moves away from her quickly and goes back to fixing those drinks as she rants on about that lover. Man and girl met by a great design that was fueled by the strokes of their inaction. And this design wouldn't be interrupted by action. The cat knew it and now they do too. She acquiesced, he acquiesced, because this is what millennials do. They are content with sweeping their serotonin rushes under a rug and consciously forgetting that the rug even existed. That's all folks. <laughs>